of chapter 4. Derivatives. Now in chapter 3, we finished up limits with the definition of a, a limit, right? So by definition, we know the limit or the derivative is just the limit as h approaches 0 for any function plus h minus the function divided by h. Right? This is what we learned. You go through, you work it all out, take the limit when h approaches 0, cancel out your h's, and then you're just left with something. And do you guys remember what the derivative gives you? Okay. The derivative tells you tells you the slope of the tangent. any point on your graph. Any point on your function. Okay. So remember we'd plug a point in, see what the answer was, and that would be your slope at that point. All right, now, slow right down, explode. Now, the rules for taking a derivative, you don't have to do the definition of a derivative all the time. We don't need to use this, okay? You have to do it on your limits test because we're making you, but there's a much easier way to take the derivative of any value. Okay, so to take to take the derivative, uh, any we'll start with just polynomial functions today. Okay, so anything with x's and x squareds and all that. Take the degree of x, so whatever the power is, and you multiply that to your coefficient out front. Okay? So we'll do it in steps. So all right, Max, I'm here to correct it. So multiply your coefficient by the power of your exponent. And then you subtract whatever your exponent is by 1. And that, there's your answer. Subtract the exponent, or sometimes it's called the degree. Of its power. I'll show you. We'll do some examples. 
You're already trying to make it harder? I like that, Bella. I like it. Sit there being like, challenge me already. Two months we've been just coasting in your class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so multiply your coefficient. So let's do an example. That's it, we'll start with just 8x cubed. So the rule is, so this is f of x. So to find the derivative, remember it's not f of x, it's f prime of x. That's the, sim the symbol we use for derivative. So all you do is you multiply your degree or your exponent by your coefficient. So 3 times 8 is 24. There's still no calculators. We're doing okay. I don't know how to do that. Well, the tough part is, for the second part, you subtract your degree by 1. How do you do that? For 3 take away 1 is 2. That's the derivative. So if you would have went back and done all this, you would get that as your answer. So why don't we just do that? You do now. Okay. So, so that's how you can, like if you want on the test on Wednesday or whenever you're writing it, you can do this as a quick check to make sure you're okay. Okay. Go ahead. Try another one. No. Yeah, let's do um, uh, where is it? X cubed plus five X squared minus seven X. So, I have prime of x, 3 times 1, 3x squared, which was the derivative for that first one. Okay. Technically, there's a 1 in front of the x, right? Okay. The next one, 2 times 5, x. The next one here, negative 7 times 1, negative 7. What's, so it would be x to the power of 1. I take away 1, take away 1 is 0 and anything to the power of 0. So it's just a, okay. Now, that's just a constant. The rule for a constant is anything to the power, or anything that's just a, a value, its derivative is just zero. So this guy here is just, anytime it's just a number on its own. Right, so you don't even have to put the zero in. You could have just had this as your answer. Okay. Take the derivative of the square root of x. Is 
It's not funny. This isn't fun? It's not funny. What's not funny? The square root. Oh, please. Okay, square roots. This is where all that stuff that I taught you guys about exponents and powers in grade 10, when you were like, oh, I'll never use any of this, you use. Block. So remember, uh, square root is actually written like with a little 2 there. You guys remember how to write that as a power? Yeah. Yeah? It's actually just x to the power of 1 half. So now you bring the power down, multiply by the power of, by the coefficient up front. So one half times one is just a half x. What's one half take away one? Perfect. Now I believe in the textbook they will let you leave it like that. What's that? That no, was funny. Other way you could write that also would be like this. Whenever anything to the power, a negative exponent, you could put it on the denominator. Take the reciprocal of it, make it positive. You could write it like that. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Kind of making a is it kind of the pattern here. People tend to really like this stuff because it's it's not bad. This is so cool. Um, the big thing is just keeping everything straight. Like, of course, like doing this, you know, going from this to this is pretty straightforward. Three times one minus one. Oh, people like that. It's going to get a little more challenging as we go because we'll start doing like fractions and everything like that. We'll multiply it together. Then it gets a little more complicated. Uh, but the taking the derivative part is pretty straightforward. It's the algebra that comes along with it, okay? Now, um, what you need to remember about derivatives, the whole point of this is so you can find the slope of the tangent at any point, right? Do you guys remember uh, slope is a rate of change? You should have taken that in physics, like the rate of change. We, we covered it in math 10 for sure. Okay, um, so sometimes since finding slope but since finding slope is uh, is the rate of change. can also use the symbol um, so sometimes if it's not a function it's an equation where y equals something instead of f of x, we use dy over dx. Um, okay, so an example of that would be so let's find the derivative. So if 
find the derivative of y equals Okay, let's try this one. It's a cube root 4x squared. So, um, we'll learn a couple of different strategies down the road about this, but with this stuff, what's up? You need to write this all as one power. Okay? Um, so to do that, 4 over x squared, that's actually 4 x to the negative squared. And then we can rewrite this as to the power of 1 third. Now you got to apply this one third to everything inside the bracket. But maybe I shouldn't have done that part, but leave that like that. That's just a number. Don't worry about it. Um, like that. So I've applied the one third to both. This, give me this guy here. And I just apply it here. I don't know what the cube root of four is, so I'm just going to leave it as cube root four. Okay? So now we're ready to take the derivative. We did all the algebra. But we know that y over dx, that's the formula or the notation we use for this. So I bring the negative two thirds down. That's <coughs> root four. I'm showing a lot of extra steps here. You don't need to show all this math if you don't want to. Then I'm going to subtract this by 1. Wait, subtract what one? What's up? Did you subtract the 1? The power here, okay. the exponent. So negative 2 thirds minus 1. Number 1, when you're subtracting fractions, it needs to be common denominator. 1 is just 3 over 3. Negative 2 take away 3 is negative 5 over 3. And then you put that in. And you're done. If you want, like you could tidy this up a little bit. So the negative 2, you root 4, all over 3. Oh, I forgot the x. Right. Times x. Like that. I wouldn't rewrite it with all the power stuff. And blah, blah, blah. How are we feeling? Okay. The derivative, like I think taking the derivative is straightforward. I find people always have trouble with going from this to that to this. This, not so bad. This. You guys just want to try some more examples? See some more examples? Yeah. Everyone get a good night's sleep last night? I slept from 3 to 7.30 and then I went to bed at 10.30 and woke up at 8. Wow, good for you. That's great. I had an amazing, I had an amazing after school last this year. Just sleep. Well, I thought when my dad woke me up for supper, I thought it was uh, the morning. <laughs> Not gonna lie. 
Okay. Did you sleep good last night? I did. I went to bed at 9. And right on through till like 5.30. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was great. <laughs> we'll call it 5. I thought I slept a long time, but apparently I'm tired of it. Yeah, everyone is slurred. That usually tends to be what happens the second day back. People are just bagged. Yeah. So. It's good. You guys get a three-day weekend, though, so. Oh, we don't school now, do we? You guys don't school. Sorry, I'm going to be a week in last class now that you said that. What's that? I'm not going to be this last class. <laughs> well, that's you. <laughs> that's not on me. Right? So. Um, where was I going? Now you made me lose focus. Now we're on topic. Now we're good. No. All right, let's do some more examples. I'm just going to show you guys a bunch, give you some strategies, some tips. It's basically what you got to do, though. Oh, I really like that question. We'll do that one later because it was like a, it was a test question I once had. Oh, actually. Yeah, on any university. Why don't we do it? Uh, we'll do it not today. We'll do it on Monday when you guys don't remember any of this, and when Max back and be like, "What are we doing?" Oh, she could, but that's okay. She's not gonna watch the video. You never know. She does. Yeah, she will. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's try another example here. F of x equals pi x to the power of six minus two. All right. So with this pi. Don't panic. It's just a number. I'm panicking. Pi is just 3.14. We're going to have to get used to this because when we get into word problems, we do a lot with pi. Because we do word problems with like area and volume, and a lot of area and volume questions have pi in it. So just treat pi like a number out front. That's all. So we bring the 6 down, so it just becomes prime. 6 times pi is just 6 pi. You guys are okay with pi, right? You've done enough of it pre-calc? Or does it just bring like traumatizing memories of identity screaming back? I, I think it's B. All right. Subtract 1 from it. All over 2. Minus 4x cubed. All over 4. Now, with this textbook, like I said, this part is good. The algebra will get you because the answer is not this in the book. The answer would be 6 divided by 2 is 3. 4 divided by 4 is 1. There's the answer. Okay? Is that? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So is taking the derivative all the first step we should do, like switching back to back? Yeah. Well, the, I shouldn't say always. When it's laid out like this, yes. When it's not as clear, like with this one here, yeah. Yeah, then you got to manipulate it a little bit. Like, yeah, it just takes practice. Like for this one, I would maybe like first. So like with this one, because I have um, my exponents are all on the denominator, I would rewrite it first. Do you guys? Are, I guess I should have showed this. I didn't bother. I just told you what the answer is. Like we know that the derivative of five of any constant number is just. Zero. Thank you, Kira. The reason for that is this is basically like saying five to the power, or five times x to the power of zero. 
because x to the power of 0 is just, no, anything to the power of 0 is 1. Yeah, so this is just 5 times 1. So if you bring down the 0 now, 5 times 0 is, say you, Leah. It's looking at you and you're just like, yeah. Yeah, so it's just zero. That's why it's always zero. It's so confusing. Okay. So many math rules you gotta follow. So it looks like that, and this all just becomes zero. That's why the uh, denominator, the derivative for this guy is zero. For any constant number, the derivative of a million is zero. Okay, so, so let's just keep plugging along. So negative three times negative one is negative three. Positive three, right? Dy over dx. Um, yeah, so 3 x minus 2, um, 6x minus 4, boom. Now, I can't remember what the textbook wants. It wants it like this, or you could write like 3 squared, like that as well. Either one of these is right in my eyes. All right, they're both winners. But I can't remember. The textbook will only have one answer. It's not going to do two answers for every question. Okay. All right. How you guys feeling with this? Not bad, not great. It's a little weird. I don't know. I don't feel like I need to keep rambling on, do I? No. Okay. Um, on page 186. Um, do number one, three, oh, five, that's an awesome question. Number five, I really like, I'll leave this on some acting here too. It says, find the coordinates of the points, if any, at which the tangent line is horizontal. So remember now, if you have a horizontal line, what is the slope equal to? Mm -hmm. Right. So you would take the derivative and you find what like f prime equals zero. So you'll take the derivative and solve for the zeros of the equation. That's a fun one. All right. We're going to spend a lot of time on derivatives. So like if you notice. One, once again, goes from A to P. Fantastic. Lots of questions there. Good stuff. You guys are hilarious today. <laughs> like mid-sentence, but like, yeah, big four. <laughs> Head down. You don't have to do them all, but you like, just a heads up, you're going to get another assignment next week. We might even have like just a derivatives quiz that the next week, too. Okay, so I'm really going to start hammering you guys with little... Little things to keep you on track, okay? Because it's important. Did you end the recording? No, Mac needs to hear this too. She needs to know that I'm bringing the pain and bringing the hurt. So. Oh yeah, you bring pain. I do. Okay. So, good talk.